We've also been teaming up with Tawny over the past year to showcase folk artists who are keeping Adirondack and French Canadian traditions alive. Folklorist Hannah Harvester introduces us now to a Native American craftswoman who is carrying on a family tradition. When Andre Dennis Newton is at work carving a totem pole, she feels at peace. Carving brings her a deep sense of connection to her Abenaki culture and to her parents, who passed on the family tradition to her. I went to meet Andre at her home in Old Forge, New York, to learn more about her artwork and her family story. As I'm wood carving, I begin to think about my parents and their arts through the years of carving. My father was Morris Paul Dennis, my mother, Julia Emsetikus Dennis. Andre is a lifelong resident of Old Forge, an Adirondack hamlet popular with visitors. Her grandparents came to Old Forge in 1917 from the Odenac Reservation in Quebec after a fire destroyed their home. My father was nine years old then, and um, they built their roots up here in Old Forge, and my grandfather did guiding, and he did some storytelling, and uh, that kind of got everything going with passing on our cultural stories and art in our family. Are totem poles an Abenaki or an Algonquin tradition? Now the Abenaki are part of the Algonquin Nation. There's 13 tribes with the Algonquin Nation and we're one of them. And um, all those tribes do carving, face masks or totem poles. Um, there's basket weaving, snowshoe making, anything with the natural elements. Woodworking goes back many generations in Andre's family. Her ancestors were especially skilled at making snowshoes and ash baskets. But it was her father who began carving totem poles. He learned during the 1930s from a mentor at Odenac, where the family continued to visit a few times a year. In the 1960s, he was invited to create the Indian Village for the new Enchanted Forest theme park in Old Forge. They had the train ride that went down and then it would stop. And my, either my mother or my father would go out and then they would give a talk about the totem poles that my father carved. Um, my mother would do basket demonstrations. He would have a fire going. He had um, different lean-tos he made with, you know, branches and uh, made uh, TP, the rounded huts. Uh, anything that was built there was part of the history of the Abenaki people. So this was really an opportunity for your father to educate the people who came through the amusement park? I think it was to educate the people, but I also think that it was a sense for him to keep to hang on to his culture. Andre was to carry on her father's passion for both carving and storytelling. Today, when giving a workshop or demonstration, she loves telling Algonquin stories and sharing her culture with others through her art, as her father did. But as a child, she never thought she would become a carver and never had a formal lesson from her father. It was only after his death that she discovered her gift. I was invited to restore one of my father's totem poles through uh, Dan Tickner. They have a canoe place on the Moose River. He had a 14-foot totem pole, and he wanted me to restore that, and I, I didn't know how to do that. I said, Dan, I don't know how to do that. Well, I'll help you. I'll get you going. Okay, you get me going. So I did. I went down, and he showed me, you know, how to strip the paint and, and work on it. And all of a sudden he was gone and I was doing it alone. Was a little nervous for a while, but I had the gist of, you know, how to do restoration. And I kept at it and kept at it. We did fiberglassing on it and um, I got it done and I was like, wow, I can do this. Through restoring her father's work, Andre became drawn to try her own carving. She studied his work in depth, and her mother, who had helped him with both carving and painting, became her mentor. Drawing on memories of her father's carving, she came to see him as a mentor, too. I was a kid at the Enchanted Forest, so sometimes I was grounded to the Indian village. 
So I had to sit and watch him work. And he always carved like under this tree. He would be carving under the tree so he would have some sun but shade so he'd be comfortable carving. And I would sit over, you know, a little ways on the side and I watched him. And um, I was intrigued by it but didn't pay total attention. Um, not till I wanted to connect with him after he died. It was my connection with him and it still is today. At some point early in my carving, I could feel my father's hands guiding me. I know people think that's strange, but it was so true. And I remember telling my mother about that and she said that um, she understood where, that, where I was at with that. Um, I think she still had some, a few little carving tools that she kept around the house. She wasn't gonna give them up. She gave me my father's tools, so I have them, which is, uh, was a great asset because I went out when I bought tools, I worked with them, but they just didn't work right. But then when I got my father's tools, they just moved right along. They could, you know, shave that wood away and I could, and I learned how to sharpen them and learn the movements, you know, within the wood. When you're creating a new totem pole, how do you choose which characters to use and where to carve them? I guess I kind of study the log first. Um, it's... I, I learned to be smart in that respect, especially with the grain and where the knots are. And um, so it kind of talks to me. When carving, Andre draws on Abenaki stories, her own imagination, and peculiarities of each log to choose which totems or animal spirits to create. She also follows her father's structure, often placing a bird on the top and a symbolically strong animal at the bottom. Well, this particular one, I carved a seer on the top. He's like the wise old owl watching over the village. This is the turtle here. Like my father, I carved 13 humps on turtle's back to represent 13 moons in the calendar year. Also, there's 13 tribes to the Algonquin Nation, which the Abenakis are part of. Here is the fox. He's a trickster, one to watch out for. And at the bottom of the totem pole, I have the bear with the fire. He's very strong, and he also guards the village as he prowls around during the night. So what are the first steps to beginning to carve a new animal? The first steps are um, checking out the grain of the wood. I'm just thinking about a story to tell from top going down. And right now I'm at the six point buck that I'm gonna embed within this wood. What types of wood do you use and where do you get your logs that you're carving? Well, a lot of the logs I get is from maybe guys around town locally that are cutting trees down. Most of the tree cutters know what I'm looking for so they might give me a call if there's a nice straight white pine available or, or I'll let them know what I'm looking for. I wanted to ask you about colors. How do you choose your, your colors when you're painting the totem pole? Um, actually, when I'm carving the totem pole, I'm thinking about the colors as I'm carving. This will be uh, almost in my representation of a, like a screech owl. So he's gonna be brown with black with some uh, tufts with highlights of white and then this is going to be the wind um, I think I want to leave him natural and just paint the eyes and then the background I want to do like uh, a rainbow of colors. Andre was 37 years old when she began carving and feels blessed to have discovered the talent that connects her with her family and culture. Her two sisters carry on the sweet grass basket making of her mother who has also passed on. Through her art Andre feels close to both parents. I now understand where he was. When I was a child, I didn't understand. I do today because I can go there and it's my most comfort zone. Um, anything that I carve, even if it's a custom creation, it comes from the soul. And it's bringing the spirit of these creatures out 
and framed them that are encased within the wood. Um, and that's how my father described it. And I didn't understand it till I see it happen myself. Um, it's, it, it's a warming of the heart. It really is. And to work with the tools. And through that, um, I can stay connected with my culture and my family.